way too yeah. far away. Yeah. Terrible to cast. Kay. Sorry. Oh, here he comes. Kay. Oh, something mm. moved under. Mm. Here he comes. I'm rolling. Oh, stunning. Oh. Absolutely stunning. Oh, you okay, Dave? If you've watched our channel through the years, you know that we love a tiny little spring creek that has somewhere between 4 and 15 brown trout, depending on drought, floods, or other environmental factors. Through the years, we've seen and caught some incredible fish, watched as a few floods came close to wiping it off the map, lost hope there'd ever be another fish in the creek, then watched as its population cycled back up with seriously fun fish, then ebb back down, leaving it with few yep. incredible browns. We used to fish it five or six times a year the first couple of years. It was where we learned 25 years ago that sensitive trout waters have finite carrying capacity and a finite number of trout. After fishing it often for two years, we realized yep. we were literally recapturing wow. the exact same fish, though they had grown. Low population trout waters are like that. Awesome. We're all chasing the exact same fish. A surprising number of trout streams, far more than you'd guess at first blush, are low productivity and we are all targeting and catching the exact same fish. That statement bears repeating as most anglers project there to be far more trout in most trout streams than there actually are. We're all chasing the same individual two or three large trout per mile on these streams. Of course, the term large is only relative to that stream. This stream that we call the X is also where I learned heaps about pre-spawn and then spawning behavior of browns. Watching just how focused and aggressive toward each other big males are the couple of weeks leading into the spawn. Given the fragility of most brown trout streams we fish, how few larger brown trout there are per kilometer of springs and streams, it's where I came face to face with owning the reality on the majority of the waters we fish. Looking at our impact on those few large trout per kilometer, just because we can catch them on big streamers on the pre-spawn doesn't mean we should. It's a truly bizarre thing to enjoy observing and catching these 4 to 12 trout through the season, then watch as the seasons change. The pre-spawn aggression leads to the spawn, and on these streams, the post-spawn period is rough. From mid-October through early May, there's little ecosystem energy. These spawned out fish shut down to conserve energy after exerting all they have. For six months of the year, from mid-October to mid-April, the ecosystem and bodies are energy negative in many instances and unable to repair and heal the wounds they experienced during the spawn. Those beat up, skinny, dark, rubbery early spring browns are exactly that. Hey guys, and welcome back to, well, my favorite, I don't know if it's your favorite creek in Alberta. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's, <laughs> it's well up there for yeah. me. <laughs> the X up here yeah. in central Alberta. Um, made, made a mistake today. And that was for myself, getting up way too early. It's been smoking hot and haven't been sleeping well. And I think I got to sleep about midnight last night. Woke up a couple times, watched a couple TV you shows. Both, AC yeah. was just going and it was like, oh, in and out of sleep, get up at six o'clock. From four o'clock on, I was awake. So I, if I got three and a half hours of sleep, because I was coming here. 
So, but the point is three and a half hour drive to get here, hot. We got here and the fish weren't really doing a lot, hey? No, they really weren't, guys. Um, the fish, I would say, were they were in their select spots, um, but they really weren't doing much. They certainly weren't rising. I mean, the first three that you went for, they weren't rising. No, couldn't you know? see them, just yeah. blind as. And yeah. I'll be honest, I got skunked today. <laughs> I can't believe That's it. My really favorite rare. creek yeah. in Alberta, and I got skunked. Well, the truth is, I had three fish on. Uh, situation, you will see. I was too jacked. My point is, I was exhausted, stressed, from no sleep, long drive, and you get here, and I'm just jacked. And it's like, and you know, the first fish was where it should have been. I've seen it there before. Um, and I, you'll see what happens there. The second fish was situational. First fish was my fault. Uh, the third fish was my fault as well for using the wrong hook. And that's my day. And you, yeah. you had three fish as well. Yeah, I Two had... Two chances at that one, though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's just it, guys. I mean, my, mine were interesting. But the one that I came back to, well, I, I ended up actually finding a riser, smaller, smaller guy, you'll see. But the one fish I really, really wanted was actually rising later in the day and that was cool. That's, it's such a special Absolutely. fish. Absolutely, such a special You've seen her catch it about four or five times over the last four or yeah. five years. Highlight of my season, <laughs> no doubt about Always. it. And he's yeah. fatter and heavier this oh, year too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think all told, you're gonna see a bunch of stuff I did. I was too jacked and too wanted too much, too emotional, too tired, too stressed. And it just carried through my rod. And you're gonna see some simple mistakes. And it's just like, yeah, that, that, that doesn't make sense. He doesn't make fish. Well, I did because I made the mistakes we all make when we're too jacked. But the truth is, guys, there's lots to learn from this video. I do wanna oh, point yeah. out that we walk through how we go about finding the fish, where they are, and what we're doing in terms of placing the fly and how we're changing things up. Or and even though how we miss jacked, the fish. <laughs> or how we miss the fish. And the truth is, this video shows a lot of our humanness. The thing is, we we are all human and we have we have those moments in in life where that shines through so you're gonna see that in Dave and Amelia Jensen <laughs> and a smile on my face is because of the fish she just caught and just it wraps up the day the two you got here were just awesome fish so complete gift so yeah come along guys and see what we got here Hey guys, before we get into this new feature video, there's something important we want to share with you about our channel. And it is that as artists and content creators in a micro niche, YouTube simply doesn't pay the income required to produce the how-to videos that we share with you. Yeah, the reality is we're just not a pop culture channel and our videos simply don't get high views. Most of our videos take one to two days to film on the water and two days to edit. They focus on how to in order to help you improve your fly fishing skills. We know you already know how to fly fish. Our channel is here to help coach you to advance skills through simple steps and excellent knowledge and observation in knowing what to do when. Our channel is here to help you, but we need your support. For a few bucks a month, you can support what we do and receive the extended ad-free versions of our videos. You also get our producer's notes, which provide behind the scenes considerations to help you. If you want to really tap into our trout stream fly fishing experience and knowledge that's applicable anywhere on the planet, our full digital membership has a full series of courses immediately accessible. Please click this link to support us and become a member right now or visit JensenFlyFishing.com. Okay, now for the star of our show, the X. Now, we are just looking for movement. Whew. And this is a piece of water, guys, that uh, can easily hold three or four good fish. And cruise, and cruise and nymph. Or be stationary because there's nothing happening. And you can't see them when they're stationary under the weeds. The old true spring and I'm looking in the in the base of the trough but I have to look into the weeds too for anybody cruising around in there god I love this place okay um, I'm just trying to figure out how I want to approach this I think I'm gonna slow down keep this back my my sunglasses are fogging up bad so I'm um, at a bit of a loss and disadvantage is the problem because of that and looking as we always do into the morning 
light. We know there's usually a good fish against that bank, against that little trough over there. But we also know these guys cruise up and up and down. And is there anybody in here right now? Yeah, we don't know. Just don't know. Could be easily sidled into those weeds. I know I should be going even slower, so I'm going to slow myself down. Okay, so I'm not seeing anything, but um, I know that these fish will legitimately cycle underneath. Oh, wow, that's not a lot of room at all. Underneath that far bank. So if they cycle along that and call it home, then why wouldn't they sit there waiting for food? So this is a neat question that we I get quite a bit and while the question almost always pertains to back eddies it can apply to beaver ponds as well and that question is well how do you enter a circle right this beaver pond is like this so where do, where do you get in to have a look and when it's a back eddy it's a little more difficult because the fish have to face the current when it's a beaver pond it's difficult because the temptation is way easier casting from that side way harder casting from this side but this side has the height so right now i have cleared out looking here right in this little semicircle crescent here and i'm going to put the rod behind me because that sun's over here i don't want to flash and right now um <sighs> you're looking you're using every point of glare or reflection against themselves what that means is there's an obvious white sheen on this water and it's no good for sighting fish. And the reason we're sighting in here is because, well, there's only so many fish and they're usually a good sized fish. And I'm just gonna walk around and I usually walk all the way around here now. And that's gonna convolute things a little bit but see how far back of the creek that is. I'm four or five rod lengths back. And the method for my madness on that, guys, is to come, well, you, already, you can already see what I'm doing. I hope you can already see what I'm doing. Um, there's these two leaning oh, spruce or pine, spruce trees. They've been there forever. And I just use them. I use them to my advantage. And I try to sneak in here and have a look Sometimes this fish is, well, the fish that lives here, sits right here sometimes. Right now I'm looking for a tail. I'm hoping not to see a head because if I see a head, it's going to be <laughs> looking right back at me, right? But you can see how that works for me. And I can see everything in here. So there's nothing cruising down at this point. Am I going to walk through there? Well, that would be the obvious choice. But no, I... I'm going to go back in here. Why? I like cover. Take 10 seconds longer, remain under cover, come in here, and I'm, what, two rod lengths back from the creek still. You won't be able to easily see against this bank, but that will allow you to cover everything else off in the, in the prime depth. And if you walk slowly, put your rod behind you, put your reel behind you, and have a real good look, right? You're only looking for one. You're still not seeing anything. What I'm relying on here, guys, if, okay, that current comes around the corner like that against this bank and all the way along here, as is the current stuff across isn't, but the, this is shallower. The reason I'm standing here is because usually fish that are in any kind of current will swing out from the bank out to feed and there's nothing doing that right now but i've been here so many times that if there was a fish that would live here it's usually 18 to 23 inches and usually right here and usually feeds out and comes back i'm relying on that by walking softly allowing time for that to happen if not i already know i already looked back here and I've already scanned out there. Nothing, nothing, nothing. The only place that's left in the imagination is right here. 
And if it's not gonna swing out from the bank, I get a little bit more courageous. And I, but I'm still looking under, right? I'm still looking under. If anybody shows, well, at this point it would be a dap cast. Okay, so that's a beautiful, beautiful shade line coming up. And I've only ever caught one fish in there. And that was on a hopper in August, about, <laughs> um, let's see now, that would have been 2002, 2001. So a paltry 20, 22 years ago. And it sticks in your mind. Is it realistic to expect? No, <laughs> but you have to, because that one time it happened. So as I come up, I'm actually gonna cast just a touch further, but I'm not gonna go at the fish or at the shadow line. I'm gonna pitch it about two feet out. You don't wanna be too shallow, about 18 inches off that shade line. And what that does is keys up the lateral line Look at that, just right into it and twitch. I don't know, just doesn't feel like he's gonna be there. So, any heads right now underneath there? That's what I'm looking for is a head now. A head with peck fins would be brilliant. Not gonna see that there, never have. It, I think it's just too sandy or something, that run. Never been good. Looking back, yeah, underneath, a mouth, nope, nothing. Holy, the willows are grown, eh? It's funny, you know, I've only ever seen and caught one good brown here. And that was before the 2005 flood. There was more of a trough here, but when the flood came through, it came raging off the big river and rearranged all the rock and filled it in and no more trough. You don't have a trough, well, they're not just gonna sit there waiting for an osprey to eat them. Bed used to have a fish at the top end of it, but two parts of that are that this never used to be a weed bed. It used to just be a trough. So what if we just did one kind of mid-distance cast to there? Oh yeah, oh shit, that was the fish. He's there, I see him, I see him, I see him. He's a gorgeous fish. I see his shape, here we go. Nope, nope. Please don't, please don't. Don't, 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 don't. There he goes. Gutting. He just knows today. I should have waited. Okay. No, that's fine. No, what that was, guys. Honestly, um, my cadence is too hot, too fast. Drove three and a half hours to get here, and I want to catch. That was one that the fish ate. It was just a slow, easy, methodical hopper eat. I set and missed. Where my mistake was, wasn't that I missed, that the fly popped out, because it was a big male, about 22 inch male. My mistake wasn't on the hook set, my mistake was, hey, I could see that fish. Rest it. Stop. Go back, have some water, change the fly to a smaller bug, then cast at the fish. And I guarantee I would have caught that fish, or got another take. Instead, I just waited and watched, and the fish just... The fly went over his head, he turned around, and he just went, dump. And I set the hook because I wasn't sure. And then I saw the big turnaround, full circle, under the weeds, boo! And guess where he went? He went under cover, which is that big foam line, and pocket that. I just missed that little brookie. So that's why I wasn't too concerned about the brookie there. Because if a little brookie's jumping out of the water at my fly and happily, freely feeding, that means the big fish usually isn't around. Well, guess why? Here that's his cover so mistake shouldn't have done that way too fast a cadence and too laissez-faire attitude about it so i'm going to change that and i'm i i uh yeah i'm going to change that right now but it's still nowhere near the same dynamic 
remember when that nice female used to live here the current used to be right here because the the bank was undercut and the current used to come right against this bank and that changed in the 05 flood 18 years ago as of today and that flood knocked the living snot out of this creek like i say it filled in a bunch of stuff but it also downed a bunch of trees and those trees now deflect and you see where the current seam line is a rod length off where it used to be undercut so there is that kind of subtle micro habitat changes that happen one fish so far where there are normally we would have seen five maybe six well again that's that beaver dam effect where the beaver dam goes like this and through the years of that beaver dam being there everything backs up and at first it's just the silt and fine particulates but then as floods come in even the rolling baseball rocks end up settling out right here and the effect long-term effect of a beaver dam sometimes well in this situation um, is that instead of a bucket that used to be a bucket it slowly filled in and then that bucket backed up the rolling rock and it created a step and that's what we're left with here. Man, they, this run used to be lined with fish, but it was also a foot, foot and a half deeper. So that all makes sense, right? And then we get up to the flat where last year and the two years prior to that, there was a 26 inch brown that lived up in here. So let's go to see if we can say, find them. We've only seen, oh, look at the size of that hopper on the water. Right there. I'm green enough. You know, it's funny because that stick over there, legitimately there could be a two foot fish under there. It's only a foot of water, but it's got perfect overhead cover. And if you have a resting fish, that's a perfect spot. Ain't nothing saying it couldn't just be resting right there. And right now, oh, the grasses are beautiful. Absolute beautiful grasses and I'm in shade. And you go, why is this guy loving this so much? Because I have cover myself. I'm not out in the wide open glary bits. I am in shade behind grass. Sometimes this guy or the fish that sit in buckets like this, just like the fish that I just missed or lost, I guess, um, you know they slide up in that trough leading in. So if I go real slow and you're going, why are you going so slow? Well, it's because could be coming down, could be stationed in the weeds, could be doing lots of things. Even a, like Amelia saying, oh, there's a little stick underneath there. Well, why wouldn't the fish be there? Well, it might be, but anywhere in there is totally lit up where earlier in the day and the sun angle is like that, you would see underneath it because the under at that angle, the sun is going at that angle under and lighting everything underneath that stuff up. So you can actually see if there was a fish underneath those sticks across the way, it would be lit up. The underside of it would be lit up because the sun is coming from a uh, reflection zone. It's coming from underneath it off that marl. And then whatever isn't obvious um, would show as a shadow coming off the bottom. And either case, you're going to see movement. Okay, so why am I not prospecting? Well, because I know what lives here. Um, any movement from the fish that I know that lives here, well, it's gonna show. And the pace I'm going, this is only knee deep water. It's gin clear, you ain't gonna miss it. You have to trust your eyes. You fully have to trust your eyes. And if you look at my feet, how I'm walking right now, I'm actually walking like this, okay? So you go like that, at that pace there, it's about like that, it's just slow. And that's my pace for marginal water. Marginal? Well, there's no structure. Where's your hard, hard line? Where's your depth? Where's your overhead cover? Well, there isn't any. So, because there isn't any, I'm moving rather quickly specifically because A, if I can't see it, it's not there. And B, if it's cruising, I wanna catch up to it. Uh, I've dismissed everything downstream because, well, you could see everything. Trust that and keep moving. And now, 
There's just a tiny, tiny undercut across from me. I'm looking, you would see a tail, you would see a head. The only problem here is that weed bed over here now. And this is where I get a bit of height. And just getting height. Now I'm also relying on the fact that I know these to be colorful fish. Bright gold, copper, red tail, blue head, green head, all the above. So if I know that, and you can hear it in my voice, I'm totally excited and jacked up, I'm way more than I should be, but yeah, I'm, I'm crawling out of my skin. I, you know, I, I probably just sound like that, you know, doofus that's, oh, well, you know, you know that's how I feel, but I'm trying to with, you know, subdue myself because it's, yeah. yeah. When you love something, though, that's where our passion really pops out. Oh, passion is. <laughs> so right now, there's a white foam line. And then there's also a weed line. So there's a white foam line about three feet the other side of where the marl and weed bed intersect. And I can see on the marl, I can see everything on this side, but I'm just not able perfectly to see along that weed line. So what I'm looking at is, okay, I'm keeping my eye, mind, mind's eye on the, on the white foam, and I'm looking underneath it to the weed line and just looking for any weed that's flagging, any weed that is going counter or faster or, or bigger or more prevalent or more presence than the others, because quite often a tail of a big male brown just looks like a thick weed. And I'm not seeing it, so I'm gonna get up on the bank here and let's keep going. Okay, so I now have on a size six pheasant tail nymph moderately weighted with lead as to get it down. I'm just gonna try to get that in there right across and try to suspend it. Oh, that was a five inch brookie. Not what I was, not what I was looking for remotely. That's funny. Again, do that right out of his mouth right out of his mouth oh dave he turned on that and everything he had it he came screaming out flared his pec fins like that and then turned and ate going and did a full circle as i was setting the hook how do you like them apples which guys more than anything else um, switching my fly right now isn't about the fly it's about me clearly i'm i'm moving too quickly i've missed two fish in a row i don't miss two fish in the row now that one, like I said, it just it ate and turned around and faced me with its mouth open. I've seen that lots, but I shouldn't have missed it. So I'm going to slow myself down. The old pheasant tail works, see? Um, but I'm going to go with a copper tail, uh, hair's ear pheasant tail, that kind of stuff. Something, something about a size 12, 14. Just A, to slow myself down, and B, to give it something smaller, but still sparkly so that to attract it. Okay guys, so I want to talk to you about exactly what I'm doing while Dave is ahead of me on a, on a creek like this. And the most important part is I'm staying back at least a rod length and my foot movement echoes Dave's. It's very light, it's very considerate of um, logs and sticks that might crunch, that kind of thing. Of course I'm trying to film him. But the, what I'm sharing with this with you is the whole point that if you're fishing with another angler, if you're, you're together and you're both looking, you want to respect the person who's leading, giving them enough space that if they have to, at the last minute, pick up their rod and cast right now, you're well enough back, you're giving them the bit of, bit of space, but you're also really respecting the environment of the stream and making sure that your movements are light and echoing exactly what they're doing. And of course, you can look with them and you can also look from behind because sometimes, as you've heard us say, those browns like to sneak up from behind us on occasion. So just keep that in mind. Okay, guys. Um... The last two springs, I have been busted in this pool by this fish. Um, when you think you got to give it lots of time and you think you got that done, but you don't give it as much enough time 
as it requires, what ends up happening is the fish sees you. And the last two times I've been here, from right out from the, underneath the bank there, you think it's going to be up by the tree and under the tree. Well, that's exactly where he goes to once you spook it from the tail out trough. So, because I can't see in here, I'm actually going to stay low this time. I'm going to try something different. Usually you can see the path I take right through there. Um, it looks like a fairly worn path, to be honest with you, so I'm not real confident. I was wondering why that last fish didn't eat my hopper. Um, I think this one's getting worked just a little bit more. But the point is, I think this fish could easily be underneath that cut bank at the back end here. So I'm just going to put that there in shallow. And I'm going to go with a longer cast than I normally would. And I'm just going to place it just out into the bucket, but close enough that it could induce a take. Playing it safe this time. Because on that bank, you're going to be lit up, looking into, struggling to see into that shadow line, right? So I'm playing cautious. Oh, there's a big wake upstream. Exactly where I was hoping I would see a big wake. Okay, so I'm starting to be able to see under there. So I'm just going to get my feet up ever so slowly. Because I know I'm lit, right? You know you're lit up. And this is the problem. I've got the, the lens of the GoPro sun angle that way. So if you guys aren't looking perfectly straight on to what I'm looking at, it's because I'm trying to rotate my shoulder to consider that reflection of the sun. And again, I'm looking right in here. Oof, I'm looking for any movement. So hopeful that a tail shows or a head or a swing of a body or, or, or before I get too close. Oh, that's a good rise upstream. Yeah, up, up there. Yeah, but I don't want to run into that because you don't want to daisy chain this either. Oh, I see it. Gorgeous fish just on the edge of the shadow line way upstream. Way up there. Okay, it's coming down. It's right out there. He was coming down. There he is. Here we go. You see him? Here we go. There we go. Yeah, if you would. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Okay, so guys, that's unbearable. This pool continues to confound me. I can't believe I dropped that. That was a big fish. I'm gutted. Um, so, <laughs> so I'll tell you right now, guys, this is my favorite stream and, and I obviously want it too bad. Um, first one, okay. Uh, the second one was kind of a miss. That one there was gorgeous. That was everything I drove this far from home to be and to do, and I'm gutted on that one. And that, honestly, I don't think there was anything that I did wrong on that one. It's just, uh, I say there's a, there's a must-add hook that's really thick, and it, it's sharp, don't get me wrong, but it's thicker through the hook, sh hook part of the hook. And because of that, um, sometimes what happens is you don't get that to slide through the fish's skin and its mouth and its jaw it just kind of doesn't want to pen penetrate because it's like well if you have a, a the, uh, needles are thin for a reason because you want it you know they, they want to get the needle into you and having a thick part of your hook kind of keeps that from happening so i was wondering as i tied that on from amelia's box i was like i didn't bring my hopper box I should have stuck with my beetle with the hooks that actually have less stout, uh, uh, a pointy part of the hook. That's on me again. <laughs> Brilliant. <sighs> okay, guys, so you've not seen me miss three fish straight. Um, the first one was a miss hesitation because of four X instead of three. I didn't go for it, followed by an impatient go right at the fish. Second one was such that the first one my fault. 
Um, should have waited, waited, waited. Second one uh, was just situational. Didn't want to come up for the hopper and the button hook on the, the full circle <laughs> face at me on the pheasant tail, that's just situational. This last one, again, I was just saying to Amelia, yeah, I'm gutted as we walked around that entire um, horseshoe bend of this creek, I was going, yeah, um, the, the impatience or the excitedness, this is my favorite creek in Alberta and we drove three and a half hours. We live too far away from, well, from where I love, from a fishing standpoint. I'm too excited and my emotions are too high. And I was just saying to Amelia, you know, if I wasn't so jacked up and so excited and anxious, I guess, it's not really truly the word, um, but it kind of is. And you rush. And because I was a little bit rushed, I was just saying to Amelia, if we'd taken the time, and if I wasn't so anxious and emotionally jacked, we could have set up a gorgeous eat on that last fish. Instead, I rushed it. I used a fly that maybe I shouldn't be using because of how thick that hook is, hook metal is. Um, and I rushed it. It was a perfect cast, don't get me wrong. But still, the rush is there. And when you rush, it doesn't always go your way. And the telltale that of rushing too much is, well, I pulled it out of the mouth. And we didn't set up on the camera and the pace and the cadence for us is if we can set up on the camera and get the gorgeous shot everything goes our way if we go faster than that sorry I just got to do this well, no with a, with a horse fly but the cadence is if we don't set up with the camera we're going too fast bizarre thing to say but that's how it is on these streams and I know I'm going too fast because I didn't allow that all to transpire. I was just like, you see it? Let's go. And well, so that's on me. Two of the three is on me. One is situational. Now it's Amelia's go. Let's go. Let's go see in this gorgeous piece of water just up ahead here. Guys, so we've split up here. And Dave's not getting ahead of me, but he is across from me. He, just so that he can see. He can also be eyes for me. That's kind of half the fun when you're fishing with somebody else is often being able to be eyes. Sure, we both like to spot our own fish, and I do like to spot my own fish, but it is awesome to have a second set of eyes because, as you can see, as I come up here, I actually do have a bit of a glare line, whereas I bet you Dave doesn't. And see, that proves my point there, guys, is Dave can see everything. And he can see for quite a distance because, as you guys can see, this stretch is really low and flat with very little flow. So again, you can get cruising fish easily. And yeah, you gotta have eyes pretty much everywhere in that zone. My, yeah, and you have, exactly. He's, a real dark backdrop that creates a dark spot. Yep. You have all that smoky sky glare. That's right. So again, positioning to where you look for fish is really important. Um, if you don't think you have a good visual and you're on your own, change, cross the stream, get into a side where you've got that dark backdrop. Um, I think the biggest thing sometimes we get lulled as fly fishermen into, especially if it's hot outside, if you're anything like me, kind of drains a little bit of your energy, but we get lulled into you know, picking the side or picking the side that's easiest to cast from, and we don't change up and we miss opportunity to see fish. This is the stuff that I now get hopeful for again. There's a log up here, guys, where I filmed Dave on a gigantic hopper eat. Um, brilliant fish. Some of you might remember the video, to be honest. Um, you know, this fish came out from under that log and sucked that fly in. Stunning male, male brown. And you were about to say, Dave? Well, earlier today, I was saying that because of the angle of light, that angle of light hit and would go 45 the other side as well. And anything underneath the logs, you could see because the light would re-radiate. And in this case, because the sun's there, and that weed mat is all along and on the upper side of the of the log that's keeping that light from getting in there to go like that so where if you remember when we were here with that giant brown mm -hmm. and you see that saw that tail go back and forth it was because it was not such low water and because it was flowing 
it kept the didymo growth off and it kept that whole zone clear so you could get the light to bounce off the marl on the bottom and just absolutely glow everything and that day, you remember that big oh, tail just yeah. going like this. Couldn't and, we couldn't miss it? Well, at once that you're time. clued, once you're clued it, into, yeah. But now, I mean, I mean, it's it's a classic for this particular kind of stream, guys. That is a classic spot. I mean, that's a dink that we're yeah. watching rise, but this is a classic it. location for a big fish to hold. Hey guys, so yeah, this is a really special stream to both Dave and I, and we're coming up on a run where I've caught a fish a couple times before. He's got a gorgeous kind of peachy, um, orangey, just really rich looking belly to it. Good size fish, and I've really enjoyed getting him in the past. So my, my hope today is that I do intersect him, that we can find him. So we're gonna go and have a go with that. There are so many hoppers falling in the wire today, guys. Um, and how we always attack this one is Dave's up on the far bank. This is the side to actually cast from. He's eliminated this pocket. I'm still looking as I go, just in case something appears that he didn't see from underneath that spruce. But I have my doubts right now. Slowly moving up, Dave's starting to look just Nothing there, hey? No. Hey. We're not gonna miss it, that's for sure. I'm pretty sure we're not. It would have to be a very, very subtle, subtle depression over there in the shade line. I am walking, guys, and I do have a, a tiny bit of fly line out, um, but with my rod behind me. Um, that way I'm ready to just pick up and cast. We often do that in a stream like this because it's, it's a good, great way to go, especially since I'm open. You know, if it was bushy, well, I'd have it in my hand. But in this case, you know, I can just pick it up, water load it, pick it up, and back cast it and then on the water. So this is where he has often been, but we're gonna find out today where he actually is. I know, if he's still around, there's always that. The only part I can't see actually is on your bank, there's some shadow below that spruce. Yeah. So I'm waiting to see if there's any movement there. So far my money's uh, up ahead here, guys. Straight ahead of me you can see some foam and that's where the majority of the current comes in. Um, unless this guy is somehow cruising through these reeds, um, which I kind of have my doubts on being that it's a 30 degree day and very exposed. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be further up there. Um, if you can see under the spruce, then I can see everything upstream. Yeah, the one that's directly beside you off your left? Yeah, yeah I can see that. That is not going to be a fish right there. So I can see everything to the next spruce. You can, eh? So can I quite well. The reality is, guys, is that, you know, your hopes and dreams don't always align every day that you're on the water. You, you want so badly for them to, but we've pretty much walked through, wait a second. No, I got him, Dave. What? I got him. Back off. Where is he? He's right in the heart of this riffle. And that's my fish, colorful belly and everything. You better come back here, go way around. Whereabouts? No, no, he's downstream from you, about probably a rod and a half, two rods. On the other side? Yeah, just in the heart of the foam. You've got to come way around to me. As he moves. Not as yet, but I swear that's a fish. There's no question. There's a red weed? In there. There's a red weed? Yeah. Ah, it looks so good. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not discounting that yet. Not a chance. Not a chance, because it looks to have kind of a reddish tail. I swear I'm seeing fins. How far above the spruce, the leaning spruce? Um, above the leaning spruce. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? By, by a rod length, maybe. Yeah, that's a gorgeous fish. Yeah. I'll be a minute. No problem. Yeah, I figured you'd want to film that. <laughs> It's way too nice, yeah. I can see the color on him from here. I'm hoping to put it just upstream of him in the, I don't want to get caught in slack water. 
So left of him, but upstream left by maybe a foot or two is my hope. I'm going for it, Davy. Spook, you've got to be kidding me. It landed and spooked him. That was a perfect cast too. Wow. Like the perfect cast. Oh. The perfect cast. Jeez, that is gutting. Like cast. it couldn't have been better. I don't, I don't say that too often, guys, about, about my casting, but it couldn't have been better. And that hopper landed. I mean, on, honestly, in some respects, I, I do wonder if the fish wasn't swaying hard. And I do wonder if something had it slightly off. Oh, once again, I mean, I'm sitting here, guys, going, man, should we have waited this out? Should I have seen that fish sway? And in my head, I thought, no, man, you're going to smack that hopper in there and it's going to come over and... It showed nothing that it was feeding. Oh, but it's true. It didn't show anything that it was truly feeding. And that should have been, I guess, a telltale sign. Dave said, you know, are you seeing it move? And I said, not really. I mean, you can't miss the fish, but I'm not seeing it move. And I, might have stepped on them too. I am wondering, to be honest, guys, when I told Dave, he was well back of the bank, but he was upstream of that spruce that was in front of where the fish was holding. And... You know, I did say to him, is there a possibility that, you know, he felt your vibrations? And that's, that's also very real. As Dave's saying, four hours, guys, we're going to come back. I have my hopes up. That is such a stunning fish. It's the one I wanted. Yeah, I'm gutted in now, but I'm, as Dave said, I'm trying to keep, kind of trying to keep hope up. Just in case we typically I'm spend the next four hours working wonder. five or six Do fish that. above this point. Extremely low water and the high heat of May and June likely either pushed the fish we typically see down and out of the creek or saw them nose and belly into ground springs that seep undercut banks and weed beds. We didn't see another fish in the coming couple of hours and a frustrating day saw us double back to have a look in the run where Amelia's big fish had spooked. Walking well around the entire run to hunt the entire corner, we noticed that small hoppers were now active and were everywhere. The spruce here below. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> we were quite a ways upstream here, guys, and Dave just literally heard and saw a rise somewhere down here. What we walked past. Yeah. I'm waiting here. Okay. So in this circumstance, guys, I've got some shade here. I took myself out of my rod tip where I was in sun and put myself in shade while Dave is going downstream below to see what he can see yeah. in here again. Yeah. He's literally, are you rolling? Yeah, I absolutely am. If you aim to the bank, just above the top bow. Okay. And let it drift in. Okay. And I don't need to be that tight to the bank, but relatively? You would be. Okay. Here we go. Yes! Oh, he charged at that, guys. Yeah, okay, come on, come on, come on, come on. Get down, get down. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. That fish was literally against the bank down here. Hey. Was it? Yeah. That is awesome. He was, he charged. Yep. I had it, my camera on his tail. I gotcha, yep. But as soon as it landed, he just screamed across. All right, get to the tail out. Yeah. Nice fish. Definitely not the. Uh, Gorgeous colors, but not the peachy one I was hoping for on this run, but that still could be up there. So that is awesome. <laughs> and, and, and what a lesson in um, listening yes. and being quiet as you walk, hey? Because that's the only way you knew that there had been a rise down yeah, here. Yeah, we were 40 yards ahead. Yeah, right? Well, guys, that makes me happy. Uh, the skunk is off for the day. <laughs> you know, that really is a situation where we're walking up and, uh, you know, we had walked past this and both of us had taken a real good look under this tree and seen nothing. Um, I, chose, I chose not to actually fish it because I thought we were seeing in it really quite well. 
And I'm kind of glad I, I didn't, to be honest, because we kept walking and the power of your observation, your, your skills of senses, right? Listening is the big one. So here we are walking up and yeah, I mean, Dave heard, I, I didn't, maybe I was in a, in a footstep moment, but he heard the, the sip and he looked downstream and you couldn't miss it because of course all of this is so flat and he saw the bulge underneath the spruce tree. And then it was a matter of, okay, slowly walk back down. I kept myself in this shaded bit right up in front of me here. I, at first I was in a bit of sun. I thought, no, I gotta back off and stay in shade. And I didn't come too far down, whereas Dave was able to walk all the way around in behind this spruce. And then he was able to actually spot that fish under the spruce tree and was able to say, hey, you know, if you just get a cast at the head of the well, right at the top bow, that fish is gonna come. And yeah, I mean, he came and smoked that hopper. Um, really love this hopper pattern of ours, if I'm honest. It, it represents um, a lot of what we're seeing right now, guys, um, in terms of the sort of, I would call it medium, small to medium sized um, hoppers. It's very natural, brown body. It has great floatability because of a, a chunk of poly underneath the deer hair here. And of course it's got the legs. Um, just a nice pattern. I'm gonna tie more of those. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was just a fun fish. Uh, what can I say? Biggest lesson for everybody, go slowly. Make sure you're listening as much as you are looking. All right, we've seen this fish rise a couple times. Coming up for hoppers, so. You probably want to cast a wee bit ahead of yourself. I'm going to do that. Stay in my piece of shade. Yes, what a fish coming right at me. What a fish, you guys. This is the one I wanted all day. This is the one I wanted all day. Yep, yep, yep. This is the one. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Okay. Keep him out of the weeds. It's just going to be about timing this and keeping it away from that stick. trying to control him up to the shallow bit if I can. That's what I'm thinking. He's looking foldy, but... He's looking foldy, but he's still quite down. Yep. I don't really want him going way up there either. Yep. Okay, right in here. There you go. Keep his head up. Up, up, up. up. Yes! Yeah! Oh, this is so the fish I wanted today. Woo! Oh, jeez. Yes! Oh, you guys, this is that peach colored absolute beauty. Wow, what a fish. Yeah, it's an old friend. Yep. <laughs> okay, love, we're up here. In, in the, the ripple. Yeah. You can go. Here we go down. And away we go. Oh, that is just a spectacular fish. Wow, so yeah, that one absolutely means the world to me, guys. If there was one fish I wanted to catch today, that was it. I told you when we came up this morning and then I ended up spooking that fish this morning. But on the way back, I said, you know what? We've given it enough time. We've gone upstream, a number of hours have passed. On the way back to the van, I wanna have a go. And here we were walking up I saw the fish rise. We saw it rise in the same place it had been when I spooked it this morning. You know, and I thought, oh, okay, I think that's a pretty good fish because it moves some water. Now this time, guys, I said to myself, I cannot go right at the fish, okay? Big learning lesson before, don't go right at the fish. And so I didn't, truth is, it was in a bit of shade and I couldn't see exactly where it was, which I think was in my favor because I put it quite a ways off the left side of the foam and the main current 
and honestly I think I was a bit behind it but it came over and absolutely smoked that my hopper pattern <laughs> the colors on those fish are oh, you guys know I love color I'm a watercolor artist and I love color bright color so colorful fish um, yeah man there's something special to me, really something special. So I guess the lesson for all of you with this is to realize that, hey, if your first go round doesn't go in your favor and, you know, maybe your dreams are shot, think about later in the day. Think about possi the possibility of coming back to that spot because maybe that fish will have settled. Maybe it will be in a different light. You know, I think this morning the light was not in my favor. So the cast in there with the fly and everything, um, again, my, my fly, the cast was too aggressive. But you know, think of those sorts of things. Lighting can change. And what's that? Cross the light. Yeah, I crossed the light this morning. Exactly, as Dave said, I crossed it. Whereas now, my flies came in. I wasn't crossing the light. You can see that fish was holding right in here. And I was coming in and I was actually casting from that shadow line that this spruce tree is causing. So again you know that was in my favor but oh guys that that to me that's a highlight of my summer so something like that is just absolutely amazing